Welcome to this RSET online session. I am Dr. Ringu Jacob from the Department of Basic Sciences and Humanities, Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology. The topic of my lecture for today is Magnetism. This topic is from first part of Module 4 in the Engineering Physics Syllabus for the first year engineering students of the Circuit Branch as per the KTU Syllabus 2019. These are the topics I plan to discuss in this session. These are some of the questions taken from the previous university question paper related to the topic Magnetism. First we start with Magnetic Field. A magnetic field is a vector field that describes the magnetic influence of electric charges in relative motion and in magnetized materials. The effects of magnetic fields are commonly seen in permanent magnets that attract magnetic materials like iron. It attracts or repel other magnets. Now we discuss about magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is a measurement of the total magnetic field which passes through a given area. The area considered here can be of any value. It is useful for describing the effects of magnetic force on something occupying in a given area. The magnetic flux is mathematically denoted by phi and it is equal to the dot product or scalar product of the magnetic field vector and the area vector. It is a scalar quantity. The magnitude of it is BA cos theta, where theta is the angle between the magnetic field vector passing through the area considered and the area vector. The unit of the magnetic flux is Weber. In the figure shown to the left, the area vector A is making some angle with the magnetic field vector B. But in the figure to the right, the area vector and the magnetic field vector are in the same direction. So the angle between them is zero. That means the magnetic flux is maximum. Now we see the definition for magnetic flux density. Here we measure the total magnetic field lines passing normal through an area as in the case of magnetic flux. But the area taken here is unity. So the magnetic flux density denoted by B is equal to the magnetic flux divided by total area through which it is passing. This will give the amount of magnetic field lines that pass through a unit area. The unit of magnetic flux density is Weber per meter square. Otherwise it is called as Tesla. Next we discuss about the Gauss's law in magnetism. The law states that no magnetic monopoles exist in the universe. In other words, the total flux through a closed surface must be zero. To understand this statement, let us take an arbitrary surface also called as Gaussian surface around the magnet having elemental area ds as shown in the figure. Now to find the total magnetic flux passing through the entire surface s, we find the magnetic flux through each elemental area ds. To find this, we take the dot product of magnetic field vector B passing through an elemental area ds and the area vector of the elemental area. Now we repeat this measurement over the whole Gaussian surface. This is mathematically written as total flux passing through the Gaussian surface denoted by phi. That is equal to surface integral over closed surface as B dot ds. As the lines of magnetic flux are continuous loops, they have no beginning or ending. So whatever flux enters a volume, it leaves the volume enclosed by the closed Gaussian surface S. It means the flux through any closed surface is equal to zero. So we write phi equal to zero. If phi is zero, the equation becomes surface integral over the closed surface S B dot ds equal to zero. In differential form, we write divergence of magnetic field is zero, which is written as del dot B equal to zero. Next, we discuss about Ampere circular law. This law states the relationship between the electric current produced by the flow of charges and the magnetic field created by the flow of current. And the law is stated as the integral of magnetic field density denoted by B along an imaginary closed path or loop is equal to the product of current enclosed by the path and the permeability of the medium. It is mathematically written as line integral over a closed path B dot DL equal to mu zero times I where I is the enclosed current. The mathematical statement of the law is the relation between the total amount of magnetic field around some path due to the current which passes through that enclosed path. In the figure, this path is called as Amperian loops. Next, we discuss about Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. It is a basic law of electromagnetism predicting how a magnetic field will interact with an electric circuit to produce an electromotive force that is EMF which is a phenomenon called as electromagnetic induction. It is the fundamental operating principle of transformers, inductors, electric motors, generators, etc. The law states that there is an electromotive force or EMF on the conductive loop when the magnetic flux through the surface enclosed by the loop varies in time. 
The mathematical form of Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction is given by epsilon equal to minus of d phi by dt, where epsilon is the electromotive force and phi is the magnetic flux linked with the conductor. The negative sign in the equation indicates that the direction of the EMF produced in the conductor is opposite to the rate of change of magnetic flux linked with the conductor, and it is given by Lenz's law. Now we discuss about magnetic permeability. In electromagnetism, magnetic permeability is the measure of the resistance of a material against the formation of a magnetic field. It is also defined as the degree of magnetization that a material obtains in response to an applied magnetic field externally. The SI unit of permeability is Henry per meter or Newton per ampere square. Permeability of free space denoted by mu0 is a measure of the amount of resistance encountered when forming magnetic field in a classical vacuum or free space. The value of magnetic permeability of free space or vacuum is 4 pi into 10 raised to minus 7 Henry per meter. Now we discuss about the relative permeability denoted by mu r. It is defined as the ratio of the permeability of a specific medium to the permeability of free space or vacuum. Mathematically it is written as mu r equal to mu divided by mu zero, where mu is the magnetic permeability of the specific medium and mu zero is the magnetic permeability of the free space or vacuum. Now we discuss about magnetic susceptibility. In electromagnetism, it is the measure of how much a material become magnetized in an applied magnetic field. It is the ratio of magnetization m, that is the magnetic moment per unit volume of the material, to the applied magnetization field intensity, that is h. It is a dimensionless quantity and mathematically it is written as magnetic susceptibility chi equal to m by h. Materials can be classified into non-magnetic, paramagnetic and diamagnetic based on the magnetic susceptibility. First we take the case of a non-magnetic material. For these materials, even if we apply a magnetizing field H externally, then there is no magnetization M and because of that the magnetic susceptibility will be zero as M by H is zero. Now we take the case of a paramagnetic material. For this material, when we apply magnetization field H, some of the dipoles will be aligned in the direction of the applied field. So there is a magnetization in the direction of the applied field. It means the magnetization is positive or greater than zero. So the magnetic susceptibility is greater than zero or it is positive for paramagnetic materials. Now for some materials, when we apply magnetization field H, the dipoles inside it will be aligned opposite to the magnetizing field. So the magnetic susceptibility will be less than zero or it is negative. So in brief, for non-magnetic materials, magnetic susceptibility will be zero. For paramagnetic materials, magnetic susceptibility is positive. And for diamagnetic materials, the magnetic susceptibility will be negative. Now we discuss about the classification of magnetic materials. Magnetic materials are classified as diamagnetic, paramagnetic and ferromagnetic. First we discuss about diamagnetic materials. Diamagnetism is the fundamental property of all matter, although it is very weak. Diamagnetic substances are composed of atoms which have no magnetic moments, that is all the orbitals are filled and there is no unpaired electrons in the orbitals. When exposed to a field, a negative magnetization is produced. So magnetic susceptibility is negative. When external magnetization field is zero, the magnetization is zero. When we plot a graph between the magnetizing field H and the magnetization M, we get the one as shown in the figure. For a diamagnetic material, the magnetic susceptibility is temperature independent. So when we plot a graph between the temperature and magnetic susceptibility, we get a graph as shown here. Example for diamagnetic materials are quartz, calcite, water, etc. In paramagnetic materials, some of the atoms or ions have a net magnetic moment due to unpaired electrons in partially filled orbits, for example in the case of ion. In the absence of external magnetizing field, the magnetization is zero. In the presence of magnetic field, there is a partial alignment of the atomic magnetic moments in the direction of the field, resulting in a net positive magnetization and positive susceptibility. The efficiency of the magnetizing field in aligning the moments is opposed by the randomizing effect of temperature. So the susceptibility is temperature dependent and it is known as Curie's law. The relation between chi and temperature is shown in the graph below. Some examples for paramagnetic materials are shown here. Now we discuss about Curie's law. The law states that in a paramagnetic material, the magnetization of the material is directly proportional to an applied magnetic field. 
However, if the material is heated, the magnetization is inversely proportional to temperature. That is, the magnetization of the material M equal to C into B by T. Here, M is the resulting magnetization in ampere per meter. B is the magnetic field density measured in Tesla. T is the absolute temperature measured in Kelvin. And C is called specific Curie constant. It depends upon the type of material chosen. Now we move on to the third type of magnetic materials called as ferromagnetic materials. Ferromagnetic materials are those substances which exhibit strong magnetization in the same direction of the field. In these materials, a tiny area called as domain with a specific overall spin orientation due to quantum mechanical effect that is unpaired electrons in two different atoms interact and they line up themselves in a tiny region with the direction of a magnetic field. This mechanism is called as ferromagnetism. So when a rod of this material is placed in a magnetic field, it rapidly aligns itself in the track of the field. It is strongly attracted by the external magnet. The ferromagnetism mechanism is not present in the liquids and gases. The intensity of magnetization M, the magnetic susceptibility, relative permeability and magnetic flux density of this material will be always prominent and positive. It shows hysteresis. This is the hysteresis curve shown by ferromagnetic material. The area formed by the curve gives the energy loss in one cycle of magnetizing and demagnetizing the ferromagnetic material. Now we discuss about Curie's temperature. The temperature above which the ferromagnetic material will turn into paramagnetic material is called as Curie temperature. When we increase temperature beyond Curie temperature, it will cause ferromagnetic material to lose their magnetic property. The magnetic ordering of the dipoles of the ferromagnetic material is interrupted by thermal energy and the relation between chi and temperature is given as chi is equal to C by T where T is the temperature measured in Kelvin and C is a Curie constant. The ferromagnetic materials are used in electromagnets, transformers, electric motors, tape recorder, generators, etc. This is the end of this session. Thank you for watching this RSET online video session on the topic magnetism. For more lectures, please visit the link shown below.